Hello and welcome to another episode of the CG Garage. This is episode number 288 featuring Aaron Yartison of uh, Framestore LA. He is an executive creative director there. And I'm actually, you'll see, it's actually pretty fun. We, we've actually known each other online forever. We I don't think we've actually met in person. <laughs> it was pretty fun podcast, wasn't it, Kristen? Yeah, it was, loved listening to it. He had quite a story in everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does. He does. He's a very interesting person. He is uh, Icelandic, and we talk about Iceland quite a bit, uh, which is a lot of fun, and about his inspiration and things that goes on, uh, you know, that inspired him to do the kind of things that he does. Uh, you know, in all the places he's been, including Italy and London and uh, New York and now in L.A. Uh, and he's done some really, really cool stuff. He's got a great eye. And we know a lot of people in common, as, as you'll, you'll, you'll see in there. Um, and uh, I think he's a really great guy and he does some incredible work. So uh, it's really cool to talk with him for sure. Um, great. Well, Kristen, uh, what kind of announcements do we have? We have some uh, events coming up, don't we? Yes, we do. So... Well, we'll talk about the last, the biggest one we'll talk about last, but okay. you can find these out at chaosgroup.com slash events. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is August 19th, so it will be like two days after this podcast comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Discover the New V-Ray 5 for 3DS Max, and you can sign up for that online. Yep. The one after that is on August 28th, and that's uh, V-Ray 5 for 3DS Max Masterclass, and that will be a fun one. So you can get all the info online. And the last one, it's going to be really fun, really huge, and stay tuned for more info, but it's going to be 24 hours of chaos. That's um, right. That's going to be huge. All over the world. Yes. <laughs> it is literally huge, huge. 24 hours of us uh, interviewing, I think, something like 60 different people uh, across mm -hmm. the globe, and we're dividing it up by time zones. Uh, and, uh, Lon and I and Melissa will be hosting the West coast, uh, of the United States, the Pacific time coast. Uh, and so we'll be a part of that, but there's going to be people in, uh, in London, there's going to be people in New York and Brazil, uh, in Australia, New Zealand, like it, everywhere, 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 everywhere. So go check it out. Uh, we have a website, uh, set up for it. So just go to chaosgroup.com slash 24 hours. That's the number 24 and then hours. So again, chaosgroup.com slash 24 hours. All right. And then we have some news, just some stuff we've discussed over the last few weeks. And you can find this out at chaosgroup.com. Yep. We just and, want to make sure that people know about mm -hmm. uh, V-Ray 5. Uh, V-Ray 5 for Max is out and V-Ray 5 for Maya is also out. So they're no longer in beta. Those are products. If you guys want to check out that, go to uh, chaosgroup.com, as Kristen said, and look up more information on that. And of course, Project Lavina is still in public beta. So if you guys are interested in Project Lavina, go check that out as well. And of course, we also want to make a quick mention of our V-Ray collections, which is a collection of all our licenses, including Lavina and Phoenix. Uh, so that's also a really cool thing. You also get some cloud credits in there as well if you want to check that out. All right. And that is our V-Ray collections. So make sure to check out all that information on our website, chaosgroup.com. And if people want to know more about the podcast, where can they go, Kristen? Go to facebook.com slash CG Garage podcast or chaosgroup.com slash CG Garage. And remember that these podcasts are also a uh, video podcast. So they are up on video on our Facebook page, but you can also check it out on video on our YouTube page, which is uh, chaos group TV is our channel. So go check out our, our video versions of these podcasts on there as well. Uh, all right. And if you guys have any ideas or comments or would like to say anything, including say, thank you, uh, which we always love, uh, just go to uh, email us labs at chaos group.com is what we would like to do. And, you know, uh, I know something we should do is we should mention the 300th episode is coming up and Kristen and I are still brainstorming on what to do for our 300th episode. So if you guys have any ideas of something cool to do, that would be really great. I remember, remember our 100th episode, we had uh, Tim Miller and Joe Kaczynski on and we did the live thing over at Noman. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we did uh, the kickoff of Martini Giant, my other podcast. We did that for the 200th episode and that was a lot of fun. But uh, for the 300th episode, it would be fun to have some ideas. Obviously, we cannot do things live uh, or, or in person. We can definitely do them live, but we can't do them in person. So any ideas you guys have of some really cool guests, who would be a really great guest to have on the 300th episode, I would certainly appreciate it. All right. That being said, please enjoy this amazing podcast with Mr. Aaron Yartison. Welcome to another CG Garage where the chaos group talks. 
You'll know it's over when the last bucket drops. We're gonna fire off rays in high dynamic range. We know that ambient occlusion is passe. Global illumination won't lead you astray. And while image-based lighting is really swell, you need to make sure everything has for now. Well, let's 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 go through that. So let's do some some of your origin story. Let's find out a little bit about that. What's where, where did that all come from? Uh, so origin story. Um, I'm actually you see behind me. Uh, yeah. I, I was planning to be a, a um, like a guitar god. You know, this is like a you know early um, early nineties, right? Like long hair and and uh, and LA. Um, and and so I, I I played like guitar eight hours a day. 12 hours a day, just like totally, um, um, you know, uh, totally dedicated mm -hmm. and then, um, applied for, uh, music school. So I'm originally from Iceland. Mm -hmm. So I applied to music school out here, um, in the States and I got accepted. And then it was like, it was just like a summer in front of me that I had to, you know, just like, oh, okay, you know, make some money before you go abroad and start like studying guitar. And, um, um, and a friend of mine, a bunch of friends of mine, actually, they had bought, this is, you know, this is what, 19, 1990, 1991, maybe. Um, they had bought, like, there was um, a 3D program from, uh, eight, I think it was Bell Labs or at t Labs or something like that. It was, um, it was called Topaz, like super rudimentary 3D graphics. And so they had bought it as well as an, uh, it was called an AT Vista card. Um, and a DiaQuest controller to, yeah, to yeah, control, yeah. you know, to control like videos and stuff. And so I needed a summer job, and they bought this thing, and nobody knew how to use it. Right? Nobody knew. It. I was like, some we have really con like cool three um, D system, but but nobody kind of uh, had any idea of, of how to how to actually uh, you know make it work. So you know, they're kind of like, oh, do you want to come and hang out and like figure this stuff out? Right. Um, so I went there. And I just remember, like, just the epiphany I had when I just, you know, CG for the first time. It was like, it was a functioning 3D system, right? So, like, you could actually model, yeah. you, know, you could orbit around, you know, you, like, you hit the render button and you would, like, do, 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 do. It would, like, take a long time. For, was it a scan line for, render or? It, uh, it was, a, I guess it must have been. Like, uh, you know, it's been so long. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it was... You know, Did they have like, any shading at all? Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. So it was like, like the options were like Goro, uh, Thong. Um, oh wow! So you it know, did have that, yeah. I, yeah. And basically, like the I, as far as I remember, like those two options were basically like you know one was like faceted and one had average normal, you know. Right. Uh, and then there were um, you know there were transparencies and there were like you know there were shadow maps and stuff like that. So you know it wasn't totally useless and and uh, you know I. Um, I just remember, like, you know, I got into their office and and found, like, you know, found the, the, the manuals, which, you know, were kind of like a loose leaf binder and it's like not, you know, not very uh, well documented. Um, read through this stuff and, and, you know, started just like doing the first, like first bits of modeling and, and like the first rendering. And, you know, before I knew it, like it was just like the day after I'd been there for 24 hours, just, you know, just, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> Um, and just so, you know, so enamored with it. And like, I canceled guitar school. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I basically like, you know, um, so how old were you at this time? Uh, I was like in my uh, 19 or 20. Um, uh, so it, it was basically like, um, you know, no, like I, I, I literally found the thing that I just, this was going to change the world. I want to be a part of this thing. This is amazing. Um, you know, there's like nothing you can't do. It's just, you know, um, it's just, um, it, you know, it's just another reality, right? Well, besides music, I mean, did you have any other kind of visual art background? Background? No, nothing. Like it was all, you know, it was just music, music, music all the time. Right. There was nothing, um, you know, um, like I had no plans whatsoever to go into, um, <laughs> into visual arts. Right. It just like, it just kind of happened, you know? Huh. Um, uh, but I think there's, you know, there, I think there are a lot of lessons that, um, you know, from music that you can apply, you know, like mostly on the, yeah, like, uh, um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, that you can take, you know, that, that will, that will port over, but, um, well, especially 3d because of its organization, right? You got to yeah, organize uh, everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, I, I, you know, I guess if you, but even like, uh, maybe, maybe, and maybe not like at the time I wasn't really much into composition, like, you know, that much, uh, it was mostly sort of improvisation and, and, uh, you know, like blues rock, um, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of fusion and funk, but, um, you know, but, but it was, um, you know, I, and I think like the, those, like the, the more organized part of my brain sort of like, I think grew with CG, you know, as, mm -hmm. a, as, as kind of like supervision, uh, things had to go in and like, you know, you were tasked with figuring this out. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, but, but that's sort of the origin story. So like, it, and, and, and it was kind of, you know, it was an amazing time, I guess, to enter the industry because, uh, you know, we were literally four guys, uh, there, like, uh, um, and where you know, were you at this time? Uh, this is in Iceland, in Reykjavik, right? Still in Iceland. Okay. Yeah. And so what happened was like, you know, my friends brought the computer, like, can you figure this computer, like, can you figure this program out? I figured the program out and we like, you know, two weeks after I first opened, um, a piece of CG software, mm -hmm. uh, we were doing, uh, an ident package for Visa. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, you know, it's like, oh my God, how do we do this? But, you know, like, but it, it's sort of like, you know, uh, Iceland was like, kind of like, uh, you know, it's like the training wheels, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a small market. Uh, and like, you know, it wasn't like Visa, like international. It was like the local Visa right. franchise, you know? Well, I so, loved Iceland. I was there last summer, actually. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. um, I mean, it's gone from being like this total backwater that nobody wanted to come to, to like, you know, right. it's like it's on the bucket list for almost everyone to, to actually go at least once in their life. Oh, yeah. um, but it's, you know, it's a beautiful place. Like, uh, you know, I couldn't wait to get out of there when, uh, you know, when I lived there. Um, and then, you, you know, you go out into the big world and you travel a little bit and, and you, you get to see the world. Um, and then you know you come back and you realize what an amazing place this is like well there's no place like it on the planet so oh man you, there, you like, don't realize how unique it is right? oh yeah absolutely is this oh man the weather sucks <laughs> you know that's sort of like you kind of take it for granted but then like you know you you go out and you know you see yeah you you kind of like just see the rest of the world and it's like you know it is just such a unique place like um geologically speaking and mm -hmm. it's i think you know like culturally as well, I think there's, you know, there are a lot of good things about the place um, because it's sort of like, a, you know, it's, there is a, an interesting mix of, you know, like European culture, American culture, um, you know, the, the politics, I think is more or less a healthy mix of kind of left and right, you know, sort of meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, and, and obviously it's a tiny, tiny, um, you know, it's a tiny, tiny, uh, um, population as well mm -hmm. uh, with you know fairly uh, rich in resources which they've discovered now like it, it took a while to figure out like you know can you like a hundred years ago all that geothermal energy was just a nuisance right it would right. just kill people yeah. <laughs> so so like you know like modern engineering you figure out actually okay we can harness this thing uh, and yeah. make it you know generate electricity and heat uh, and do, you know, agriculture and all kinds of stuff that, you know, it, like wouldn't really be like possible at that latitude. Yeah. Um, so like 28 volcanoes on the, in the country. <laughs> I, I actually, like, I, I don't have the, the actual figure, but yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. It's, uh, kind of it's like, there's like lots of them. Yeah. I, 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 and, and obviously like, you know, the, the tectonic uh, plate are sort of like yeah. they split right there. So, you know, ever since I was a kid, it was like, kind of amazing. I was actually, one. yeah, I was driving. Forgot. We were coming from the West Fjords and we were going back towards Reykjavik. And then I see, yeah. basically, I was like, oh, my God, that's the tectonic plate. You're like coming up onto the land. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can yeah. see that shift. And it it's was like, just very, like, yes, it's like you can see. And, and I mean, the, the island itself, I think, is is so young, like, geo, uh, like geologically, geologically yeah. speaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, you know, the, the, the wounds are still fresh, you know, in a right. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
it is kind of an amazing place. And I also think, you know, like you said, culturally speaking and, and artistically speaking, there's a lot to be said there because it's got such a unique perspective on things, right? Uh, yes. Musically, uh, we went to the punk rock museum there, I think. I oh, yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it, uh, the, um, but I, I've actually been giving that some thought, like, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, like why, you know, like, a, a, like a, a tiny country with, you know, a population that is that small, you know, how come, you know, like, what, like, what's the reason? Why are there so, you know, why is like, it's kind of like, you know, it's, um, the number of artists that actually make it out of there are, you know, way higher than, you know, like the equivalent population of like a, a small village, you know, somewhere else in, in uh, the States, for example. And I think, um, I think, um, you know, I have a feeling that because there's like, there's a pretty, like there's a very good social safety network there, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that sort of, you know, I think that may play a part in, in sort of encouraging people to take risks, right? Mm. Like, if you become an artist then you or you know you play music or you you know you paint pictures or make sculpture or whatever you know you're not going to die poor and alone <laughs> right. like uh, it, it's um you know there's um there is a society like around you there is you know you're safe and it's like i think that's the bottom line it's okay right. to take chances um because uh um you know the the ramifications aren't as harsh as they may be here yeah. you know it's not like someone's going to go up to you and say, get a real job. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, there, there are still people that do that, yes. <laughs> or why aren't you a fisherman like everyone else on the village? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that, that was my destiny, man. Like, you know, it's like yeah. a, a farmer or fisherman. That's like, that's, that's my lineage way back yeah. until, you know, you get to, uh, you get to the, uh, the pillaging part, in, right. uh, uh, you know, for the pioneers. But, yeah, it, definitely. That, there was a lot of that. Well, I think that's also interesting because, I mean, I remember reading about the Icelandic economy. I mean, they always, like, they, the other thing that I remember is that they always took financial risks because they could always fall back on fishing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I think, like, I, I mean, uh, from, uh, like, geopolitically, um, yeah. you know, we've had, like, you know, in, in a way, like, during the Cold War, we essentially had NATO, like, uh, and, and the U, well, especially, the, like, I guess the U.S. over a barrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, I don't know if, if you heard about the Georg Gate, right? Like Greenland, Iceland, UK sort of closes off the North Atlantic, right? So if you mm -hmm. control that, you control the North Atlantic more or less. So mm -hmm. we were like the key to the Georg Gate, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, NATO having a, a, a base there, um, I, I, like, I, like I've, I've, after, after four years, like um, th there are a bunch of missives that are released from the, Secretary of State, and it's like quite an interesting read. This may mm -hmm. sound crazy, uh, who reads this shit, but anyways, I do. And uh, uh, so you go over um, the letters that are sent from the embassy in the US, from the, the embassy in Iceland to the State Department. And it's sort of like just read over like, you know, these, you know, like small town hick politicians and the way mm -hmm. they're actually playing um, geopolitics using like, oh, you're going to do this. Well, then, you know, uh, it, like we may have to approach the Soviet Union for support or whatever, you know, it's sort of like a, you know, the, the way they actually played that game was pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, so I think that's um, uh, possibly that unique position uh, being, you know, being that center and being that important at the time allowed them to take a lot of chances as well. Um, right. That like, you know, wouldn't have made sense otherwise. Um, and also, like, uh, um, I guess the, um, you know, um, I, there is this sort of naive sense of um, this sort of blissful ignorance of our own limits there. Like, if one... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of, you know, it's fantastic until you go into banking. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, if, if like one person on the island like does something, like it, it immediately becomes obvious to everyone else, like, well, that person did that. You know, I, I know them. I went to school with them. I can do that. That's right. easy. So, um, you know, there, there will be these fads that, that uh, happen, like, you know, will sweep across the nation. Right. 
um, and, and uh, there will be like you know um, industry or you know um, like the banking industry for example right salmon salmon farming for one right. um, there's a yeah it's it's pretty interesting well it's I also you know I think it was kind of amazing that Iceland sort of you know fell into the 2008 recession as badly as everyone else but made the most aggressive recovery plan ever by yes. saying done no more yeah. loans <laughs> and they're like what you can't borrow any money done and you recovered like that because there was you're not going to be bothered by all this debt anyway it was amazing but you can only do that because what's the population of iceland 300 it's like 300 there's like 300 yeah that's like two santa monica's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like oh i would have thought like santa monica's bigger but, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah it's like it's really well or maybe yeah maybe just about santa monica it's it's ridiculously small and yeah. so it's it's easy to make a decision because you're like, yep, we all agree. Good. I, I, I think also, I think also, um, you know, the fact that um, you have the currency, the Icelandic krona, yeah. right? So, um, you know, what that allows the government to do is sort of squeeze the population, um, uh, you know, way more than everywhere else, right? So, if you want to tighten, if you want to tighten the belt, uh, and you control the currency and you control import export. Mm -hmm. then, um, you know, you, you can, you can really put like, you know, you can really put the thumb screws on like, there's like, no, we're not spending money. We're only getting money in. Right. So that's, you know, I, I, I think there would have been like, you know, there would have been guns in the streets if it was here, you know, uh, oh, been, uh, God. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the fact that of, we rebel about the most mundane things makes you realize <laughs> But let's not get into that. So, okay, so you're in Iceland. You, 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 you know, you came from a smallish area in Iceland. You uh, love guitar. You think you're going to be a guitarist, and suddenly your whole world gets turned around by this 3D application back in the yeah. early '90s. So, how did this evolve from there? Uh, so, um, we started getting in projects. Um, you know, there was a there was a real curiosity from the advertising agencies there. Uh -huh. um, of like, you know, wow, this like computer graphics thing. I mean, this is early nineties. Like there's no, you know, even like if you look anywhere else in the world, there was not a lot of, of this thing going on. Mm -hmm. um, we dove like, you know, just dove in like deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, started, you know, buying computer, I think it was computer graphics world. Um, it, this is, and this is like before the internet. So, um, it, like the magazines um, with the CDs in the back, right? Yeah, like they weren't even CDs. This was before CDs. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh right. So, so uh, you know, we started like you know just reading, um, you know, reading these magazines, uh, and started working with a production company, and they introduced us to all the agencies, and you know, all of a sudden the work just started flooding in, um, and we, you know, we were just like you know like totally like so busy, and. Uh, one of our partners actually had a, a background in, in programming. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we started sort of the, the, the money that came in essentially was just the, because all of us was like just so crazy about this thing. Um, we were immediately funneled into just more equipment, more software, um, you know, just like just, just learning, getting resources and, and things like that. So um, we quickly realized that you know we could be doing better as far as like workstations were concerned so after like i think it was like the first year um we really sort of we really saw that uh, um you know life would be much better if we had alias power animator <laughs> okay. uh and uh, and obviously like really high on the list were um like silicon graphics workstations mm -hmm. so we kind of you know wanted those as well uh but there was no silicon graphics dealer in iceland so we, um, we had heard that there was like, you know, this line of workstations from IBM, it was called the RS6000, mm. that had, um, um, you know, graphics cards from SGI that they had like developed for them. So it was like OpenGL on IBM. Um, and we um, approached IBM and showed them a demo reel because they had a, a, an office in Iceland. Showed them a demo reel and they were like, oh my God, this is awesome. It's fantastic. But, like we've been looking for like, um, graphics to show like we like looking for material to show that you can actually do graphics on IBM machines they're not just like international business machines but you can actually right. do graphics so um, they uh, essentially funded us they bankrolled uh, the first version of ours 
uh, so we founded this company called Oz, um, mm -hmm. and um, and they so they uh, sort of bankrolled the the equipment and the software. So we got like I think two licenses of Alias Power Animator, and um, and you know two workstations like uh, hardcore workstations from IBM. Yeah, that wasn't and, cheap. Alias was expensive. Oh no, no, that was like it was like a half a million dollars at the time. Uh, yeah. you know, for yeah. a bunch of kids, and like yeah. I was like, mm, okay, sure, we'll do it. Um, and and um, we used that for a while, and you know, like still business kept kept uh, coming in, and you know, and sort of the the projects got bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And as we were doing, so we were doing one thing for um, you know maybe ninety one, ninety two. Uh, there was a the local Coca Cola. Um, uh, factory it has a there's an anniversary there and we're doing this piece for them um, that um, it, you know it required a lot of ray tracing right so mm -hmm. um, and so like the like power emitter at the time actually had a ray tracer so we you know we get that going and that magic word ray tracing which um, we had learned about through a fax from alias research um, <laughs> that was like that was our email at the time. Um, anyways, we're, we're doing, we're like, uh, we're rendering this job um, and in comes a friend of the CEO of the local Coke, uh, Coca-Cola factory. Okay. And he's like, oh, I, so I hear you guys are doing all these renders, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, it so happens that I'm making a renderer and I'd love you guys to, you know, use it. And huh. it's not being, it's only being used by, you know, BMW, Mercedes Benz, blah, blah, blah. So um, I would love, love, it, like, love for it to be actually used in, in production. So that person was actually Rolf Herkin, um, oh, wow. uh, who actually was the, the, the founder of, of Mental Images. Yeah. So he has, a, well, at least had back then, I don't know if he still does, had a summer house up in the west of Iceland. Hmm. And he would come there to just like sort of meditate almost for two weeks a year. Yeah, ground himself, um, and gave us licenses for uh, Manta, Manta Ray, mm -hmm. and gave us the uh, uh, and and also um, y you know, hey guys, it so happens that you can actually you can develop your own shaders for this thing, right? Right. Um, so we started developing shaders for um, uh, Manta Ray. Eventually, that turned into. Um, that turned into like softy mind right. sort of uh, uh, you know when they adopted it mm -hmm. um, they kind of needed um, a uh, a library of shaders that would sort of match what alias power animator had at the time or alias had at the time right like their renderer so um, it sort of became you know okay here are the sick graph papers for you know the natural phenom phenomena that was mm -hmm. in uh, alias mm -hmm. And so we got the deal then to uh, develop the, the shader package for, for, for Softimage. For Softimage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they actually uh, brought in Metal Image or Metal Ray, mm -hmm. uh, that was the, um, you know, the, like our, like Oz had developed uh, the shader package. So all the shaders that you were using that, um, in, um, uh, in Softimage with Metal Ray. Were from uh, were from us. Wow. Um, some you know, like some tiny little company way up north in, in Iceland because of you know, like uh, <laughs> because of some friendship with like you know this CEO knew that CEO that he came by the office and right, right, right. looking at these nice computers that the, the boys had. So um, you know that sort of kept going, um, and there came there was a, like there came sort of a point in in my existence where like I was kind of like the only. There were like two artists there, like myself and Daddy. Um, and there came a point where I kind of like, you know, I really didn't want to be the one that knew the most in the country about, about, about what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of really wanted, you know, to go out in the world and, you know, take part in, in uh, bigger productions. Right. And so um, this opportunity came uh, from, from Italy uh, and I just like, you know, one day jumped in a plane and said goodbye to everyone in Iceland and flew to Italy. And I, uh, worked at a company called frame by frame, which is still, uh, running there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, uh, I flew over to London. And um, we like, actually started a dev company there that uh, we were like developing custom solutions for, um, you know, for all kinds of productions. And then from there, like one of our custom solutions, um, I started working with the mill in London. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they, I kind of had to come with the custom solution as like sort of the guy who operated the, <laughs> operated the software. So, um, so that turned into kind of like a, you know, a permalant type of gig. Right. Uh, so I was like working there for the longest time, like bouncing around, like mostly at the mill, but then like freelancing around in London, like MPC, Glassworks. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, in the, oh, uh, when I came like 2000, I moved to New York and I set up, um, uh, so like the, 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 uh, so Pat and Robin, the founders of the mill, they said like, it was like 2002, I think would be interested okay. in like, uh, you know, it'd be interesting going to New York and opening up there, like, you know, um, an office right. and, and the head of the CG department in, in, uh, in New York. Yep. So I went with, um, you know, uh, with Alistair and Angus and we opened up the mill in New York. Yeah. Starting in like, you know, tiny, 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 tiny little room. Uh, I think it was like, you know, maybe six of us to begin with. Mm -hmm. That grew, 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 grew. And I was there for like probably eight years. Um, went to Method to open up. Uh, Alex Fries had gotten in touch and said like, oh, do you want to open up the Method office in New York? Right. And that sounded like a great idea at the time. And that um, was probably around 2000. 2008, like I think it was like, you know, at the eve of the, uh, of the, the uh, it, like, I think, yeah, the, basically like when the crash was happening, like just like yep. two weeks before I like signed the thing and then like, you know, <gasps> Lehman Brothers is gone. And, oh my God. And then the rest of the world just like went to yeah. hand in a hand basket. And then, uh, I, you know, we started, um, you know, started Method, the office there uh, and was there for, I think, two years. Yeah. Um, it was you and that. Pink and who else was there? Oh yeah, Pink. You know Pink. Oh yeah. man. Uh, yeah, I hear from him every now and again. I love that guy. And Matt Hackett was there as well. Matt Hackett. Uh, and so I work with Matt Hackett at DD. He was the animation supervisor on one of the animation leads, at least on iRobot, I believe. Yes, for sure. So yeah, Matt's a great guy. Really. Oh, uh, I like yeah. uh, you know I have like I hear from him like uh, quite quite frequently. Like uh, yeah. um, just last. Uh, I have a message still I have to need to get back to. Right. Uh, but, but I think uh, I remember it was cool because I had just started at Method as well. I had just started and they were like, okay, we're starting our New York office, Alex Farish, and then, uh, you know, just, just hired me and was like, we're going to start this new thing. Let's get some CG cars going because that was my, that's one of the yeah. reasons I hired me at a time. And then so I was working with Matt and Pink, you know, because they were, uh, were going to help us with this car commercial and I was talking to you about. So it was really this interesting relationship that we had uh you know, over the phone. Like we always, we talk to each other every week, I think at yeah. least. Yeah. 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 I so. think I, I, that was a um, sort of, I think that was like, you know, a part of the, 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 the magic at the time was like, let's do video conferences a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and we did. And I think actually that was like one of the parts that was working well was like, uh, you know, that, that part, like just getting, get actually, you know, seeing people's faces and like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like, talking to him on like on on camera uh, right. that's I, like i remember like first time i met janelle um crochet who was like yeah. a, you know a comp soup at the time in in um in the la office we worked on this this, this job together um you know um just like just remembering like actually it's kind of funny like pink matt uh uh janelle like these we, all these things, all these people have just like become fixtures, um, yeah. you know, sort of important figures in, in your life, you know, as, as a, you know, but uh, it, it was like, it, it was a sh like relatively short stint. I mean, usually, usually uh, like uh, um, it's, you know, w when I go somewhere, I stay there for quite a while. Right. So like method was an unusually short stint, but like, you know, you made like, there were like, a lot of good people there, like yeah. lots of good people. Well, I think that's the thing, right? You're starting an office, you kind of have this intense moment and you get to... Know oh, people. man. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I think actually that's one of the things that, um, that I love is, um, you know, uh, like really from the like first, first, um, 
from that when I first started. It's always been, there's always been like sort of the startup uh, feel, like uh, which, you know, it's intoxicating. There's like, yeah. um, you know, there's always, there's always stuff to do. There's like, there's the real sense of mission. Yeah. Um, the, the tribe is like small enough for you to know everyone and, you know, like, uh, you know, have like real personal relationship with everyone. So I think that's, you know, that's the nice part about like when you're working in a small, when the studio is, is small and, um, you know, I think there's, uh, you know, there's some, some sort of an upper limit of like, I think 150, uh, individuals in a, in a, in a, in a tribe, you know, that you know, it can work. And, and, uh, um, you know, you can really see that, like, you can really see like when, sure. like when the studio like expands beyond that size, even at half that size, it's sort of like, you know, it loses a lot of the, it loses a lot of the magic right. and different sort of different approaches have to be found to sort of, you know, maintain the, um, you know, like embed the culture, uh, you know, like you, you can't be, you know, you can't be there to, to make sure everyone's playing nice. So, right. um, you know, there's like a, um, uh, uh, yeah, there's a, it's, uh, but I guess in short, like the, the, the startup, um, sort of the startup vibe is always like so much fun. I, I think uh, it's, it's, I've done it a, a, a few times, but the idea is like, okay, well, let's order some desks, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. let's, uh, let's get that internet connection going, you know, like, <laughs> like literally just those types of moments where like, all right, we've got internet, we've got desks. Brand new computers, you can still smell the styrofoam on them, you know, yeah, like, yeah, let's, exactly. let's start going. And then it's like this kind of a uh, kind of an exciting moment, you know, Yeah, for sure. I remember when I started the, the you know, we were opening the L.A. Uh, office for Chaos Group. And uh, start off, we just just metal desks, you know, in an office, and all, all the other stuff was starting to arrive slowly. And we were working on our computers, doing stuff, but we would we would listen for the UPS truck. It's like some more stuff's arriving, <laughs> you know. We had a new server is here, or you know, oh, a, mi a microwave is arriving. <laughs> it's like, and just that feeling of like everything is kind of new and fresh and exciting. And uh, you know, it, you don't have everything, but everything is exciting at the same time. So yeah, I, I totally know what you mean. Totally know. And sort of, you know, the, I think there's also the, you know, there's always something to do, you know, like there's, yes, you know, like none of the procedures have been built, none of the systems have been built, you know, there's always like, okay, there's a project that's happening and there's a gap and it's like, oh, okay, the gap needs to be filled, right. like fill that, however you do that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely cool. All right, so right. you were at Method, so you, were, you said you weren't there that long, right? Well, I mean, like, I think, but uh, two years is, was, you two know, years, yeah. um, like quite a, you know, and especially at that time, I think, uh, you know, this was mm -hmm. when, um, I think this is like during the, there was, a, you know, immediately a merger between two very different companies, Matthew Studios and, and, um, and Riot. And Riot, yeah. So, um, you know, two very different cultures that were sort of like, you know, just merged together uh, without, uh, I, without a lot of forethought. And also, if you add sort of the additional outside pressure of, you know, the like the, the financial crisis at the same time. Yep. Um, and it was just, you know, it would it, like when I look back at all the <laughs> like everything that I've done, like that was definitely like that was the hardest time. It was like yeah. it was such a hard time. Yep. Um, you know. But, uh, you know, but but at the same time, so many like wonderful people that like uh, you, you meet there. Uh, even though if like the outside situation was really tricky. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, um, you know, I found there's an opportunity to jump on um, my friend, my friend actually from Iceland uh, uh, called up and said, and so he's, uh, he, uh, he had actually opened up the frame store office, like a remote sort of, small remote office of for frame store in Iceland. Okay. And, and uh, um, he needed to go uh, to London to work on this job and he needed someone to take care of the office while he was away. Mm -hmm. And I jumped on that opportunity. Um, and so the, the film that he was going to, the project he was going to work on was uh, Gravity. So he was like running the, right. pre, like the previous um, uh, part of that. Um, so I went over uh, to Iceland, ran the studio there for a while. Um, Didn't Janelle go there too? 
Oh yeah, yeah. So like I, I, that, I basically like you know I, yeah. I, I nabbed her um, to come work with us. So yeah. basically, um, that was so about a year. Well, maybe half a year after I got there. Yeah. Um, a feature got greenlit that one of our friends, um, old old uh, drinking buddies from Iceland, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, made it big in Hollywood. Got like a, a feature greenlit. So um, I had to fly out to. Uh, New Orleans to um, to shoot it. So we were like in in Louisiana shooting shooting that film. Which was what? Which film? Was uh, it was called. It's called Contraband. Uh, okay. with, it was like um, Mark Wahlberg and right. uh, Kate Beckinsale and stuff like that. Yeah. There was a remake of uh, you know a, a film that the director had done in Icelandic before. Okay. Um, so um, so basically, we'd go there, uh, do the shoot, and. You know, it was sort of like we needed a, a comp supervisor to, to help us out and, um, you know, run the project. And like, you know, I'd worked with um, Janelle mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, like first thing that I thought about was like, be awesome if Janelle would join us. Mm -hmm. um, so um, she, like, she came over and I think, I mean, she had a really good time there. Like the, the crew was great. The spirits were great. Um, it was a hard job, you know, like we had, like, uh, I can't remember how many shots, like loads of shots, tight budget, but it was like, um, you know, uh, just like always, like working with Janelle, it was like, so it's like, so, so, so like a great spirit, mm -hmm. like just can't do attitude and just like steamroll through everything and just, you know, sweat the crew along with her. So, um, you know, that, that job was like, went really well. And then after that, um, after I had finished that, then um, I spoke to William Sargent about uh, coming to LA and opening up an office for a frame store in LA. Uh, so I went over there, oh, well, came over here. Uh, and, uh, um, she, and, and then like the second uh, Hollywood film for my old drinking buddy came up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, and so she became the VFX supervisor on that, on that show, which was, okay. uh, um, I can't remember what it was called. Um, uh, was it two, two guns? guns? Two yeah. guns, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and so she, you know, like, uh, like Janelle has had like a long history, well, uh, like quite a history in Iceland, like, uh, uh, in, in, you know, her, um, uh, she was there for a while. I do remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know, and and then she she brought over um, some people as well to mm -hmm. to to work there. So um, you know, there's a um, uh, the Iceland. That, that, so that, that, that's, that was the start of her Iceland Iceland history. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so you started the LA office in yes, uh, a frame so, store. Uh, um, yeah, so like first it was like um, July 2012, and you know again um, it was just like two or three of us at the at the office, mm -hmm. um, and just sort of you know just like getting things started, and then you know obviously like we we uh, we got more and more people in, right? Um, and because you guys are a, like in Culver City, like a like a block and a half from yeah, our like, but, but, but we actually we started in uh, in Santa Monica. Right. I think it was like an old, you know where the DMV is in Santa Monica? Yeah. It's basically like, you know, right, right there. Um, right. So there's a bunch of like a, a, a editing companies and stuff like that. Yeah, like, I know exactly. Know, just around the corner. Yep. But, um, um, you know, that's where we started, like tiny little office there while we were looking for, uh, you know, another office in, um, and like, you know, in the beginning it was like, mm, Culver City, no, let's not go there. But then... You know, we got sold in Culver City, and then it, it like Culver City just blew up. Yeah. Um, it just became like you know Soho of uh, of LA. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the streaming capital of <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, just you know, just uh, just walking around the uh, like walking around the neighborhood. Like at first, there was just nothing but derelict, yeah, kind of warehouses and, and kind of old factories or something. Yeah. And now it's it's just like uh, it's a hub. You yeah, know? and every other like, building around us is like some secret Apple lab of some kind. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is. It is very. Uh, it is very high tech at this point, which is kind yeah, of interesting. It's just not sure. not expected that we're in the same boat. When we really got there, it was like 
where are we going to eat? I don't know. We got to drive at least, you know, three or four miles to get something to eat. Now it's yeah. like there's all kinds of places opening up. So it's interesting. So that's it. Yeah. And it's a great office. You guys had a beautiful designed office too. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, um, I think, you know, as so it, like, I guess an office, like the office space always have to kind of develop with the business as the business grows and mm -hmm. the business changes. Um, and, you know, it was certainly not originally wasn't designed with, um, you know, with the needs that eventually, you know, came to be. Mm -hmm. it, it went from being this like super open office into like everything having to be a little bit more contained. Yeah, compartmentalized. You know, yeah, yeah compartmentalized where like so teams like working on a, you know, a project would, um, you know, be in a room, for example. Right. Um, so, um but it's still like I think the, the the bones are strong. You know, it was like it was initially it was a um, it was a textile uh, factory that made uh, mm -hmm. a, that made uh, uh, seat covers for airplanes. Oh right! Uh, and so the the, uh, the the tower that's in the center, mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, you know the the fabric had been sort of like hung for, to to dry. That was like that was the purpose of the oh, of the tower. Wow! So we just like you know empty the tower out and put like two um, like two floors in, so that there's like you know now two um, sort of you know one like sort of balcony up top, and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, and then uh, an office below, and yeah. and then like as you sit in the reception, there all that all that vertical sort of like that volume above you is like it's really cool. You can mm -hmm. sort of like see through all the way up top. Wow! So it's. Um, there's a lot of good things about that space. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, also it's going to be interesting to see, you know, as, as things develop and we come out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the, how, again, how um, space needs are going to develop from, from uh, how will they have changed, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, will, like, will the need still be there for, you know, as much office space or is it going to yeah. be more remote? Is it going to be, you know, it's going to... I well, I'm curious about that too, because the minute you started talking about like, you know, and you're right when you said like, if you had a word cloud, NDA would be like this big thing in there. Yeah. And the concept of how to handle that NBA was nothing leaves physically, you know, yeah. it's all here. And obviously when no one could actually go to work anymore and everyone had to work from home, that people started to realize well, I guess you don't actually have to be there. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. So the, then the whole idea of NDA is like, well, I guess we can still have NDAs and people work from home. I guess it's still going to work. And it and it has so far. So that whole conception that like no one's ever going to work on the cloud, everyone has to have a locked computer at their desk and blah, blah, blah. like that just went away because it yeah. had to by obligation and people realized how arbitrary that decision to like say nda is really about word of mouth it's not about where yeah exactly. computer is yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I, I think you're right I, I mean i think uh um you maybe it's like you know maybe it's a little bit of both right like you know you definitely don't want you definitely don't want the files to actually get out there in the wild, right? Um, right. Well, here's so, the thing I had. I remember because this had happened, and I think I can I can mention this. This had happened while I was at Method. It was there was, a, uh, I believe, it was a Wolverine film of some kind. It got yes. leaked. Remember? Yeah, 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 I remember that. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, and they were like adamant that all the VFX artists had to have everything locked down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact is that the VFX artists had nothing to do with the leak. It was actually from the vault, <laughs> right? right? So there's some guy who works the night shift at the vault happens to have access to the entire film on one tape <laughs> or one thing. You know what I mean? Right. That's just the nature of it because it's in the vault. That's why yeah. there's a vault. Yeah. And that person is the person that leaked it. it, had nothing to do with the individual person. So right. that's where it happened. So, you know, you, you, you're you putting restraints on the people who only have like one or two shots yeah, <laughs> available exactly. to them. Yeah. And the person who has the actual thing is just some guy who works his working minimum wage 
the night shift on the vault. And that's it was just, like the, the biggest responsibility. Yeah. Like and so that, that's your weak point. Your weak point is not the visual effects artists at the same yeah. point. So, and, and, you know, who knows if that really contributed to the downfall of the film or not, whether it leaked early or not, didn't leak early. I don't know. But it is a thing that we're like NDAs. I think that like how we manage them has always been a little bit uh, yeah. interesting. I feel and like I, also like from the, you know, from the, from the brand perspective, right? I think that's like on the features end, but from a brand perspective, I think, you know, I, f I feel like, you know, without, um, you know, without having the data in front of me, I feel like, oh, snap. That's okay. Um, uh, I feel like uh, uh, without having the data in front of me, I think, um, you know, things changed a lot after the Sony leak. Oh yeah. Like uh, you know, it became like there was a spike. It's like everyone sort of, you know, um, got yes. a lot more anti about like, okay, so how is this? You know, how is this working? Right. Um, and how and, and you know, like how do we work together? Um, so that was a, I think that was a, that was quite a big one as well. Right. I mean, especially from the executive's point of view, because there was a lot of embarrassment that was oh, yeah, exposed, sure. right? So yeah, yeah. that was that was a that was something that was, I think, a, a big point of that. I mean, I was. You know, my data was leaked thanks to the Sony leak, so I, I, <laughs> it was not a pleasant thing. Oh uh, my god! But yeah, you know, it, we we live in that world, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. but I think you're right. I mean, what is your thoughts? I mean, that, that there's a lot of studio not and I'm not necessarily hearing it so much in the visual effects world or in the entertainment world, but there's a lot of studio or a lot of businesses out there that are now like, you know what? keep working from home <laughs> you yeah. know no I, I think you know i think it just depends on like who owns the ip if they're right. I mean, and like the size of the legal department mm -hmm. uh, you know i think uh, but there's um, no but my point being is like you haven't proven an argument that me working from home is actually harmful because we know it's not people are working on big films from home <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right now yeah yeah for sure i think um uh, but but i think there's more to it than just the features end right so from uh, you know, from a brand point of view, like leaks, like certain leaks for certain brands can actually, uh, you know, they have the potential to shift stock prices, right? Sure. Um, sure. So, so um, you know, there's like serious ramifications if that happens. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you, you know, um, which I think, like at least in my mind, like that seems like a. Um, you know, there, there, there has to be some sort of a, there's some sort of a sort of a security system in, in place to, you know, to make sure that that's. And I think that's still check. possible. Yeah, 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 yeah for home, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like the, the, the cloud, well, first of all, the cloud has evolved a great deal since 2011 or 12, right? So, yeah. so lots changed in that, in our time and the way, the way we think about security on the cloud has changed. We went we, yeah. we went very quickly within like almost a year or two. We went from we will never render on the cloud to all of our renderings are on the cloud. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I, I think it's just like you know it becomes like at first it's like at first it's an impossibility. It will never happen. And yeah. then like it like once the dam breaks, you know, like oh yeah. we have we have this project that we have to do. Right. We put like put the numbers together. There's no way. Like we don't have the AC, we don't have the power right. uh, to run the size of farm that we need to actually get this done. Mm -hmm. And so the first project happens and you go through the pain with, you know, the, system, yep. the systems people. And then after that, it's just like, yeah, of course, like this. Yeah, we always knew it was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think it's, I think it's really interesting. I think it's really interesting that, that, that you know, what that that shift in minds like oh yeah i guess this is fine great oh yeah. look how much faster look how much faster we got everything <laughs> it's i think it's just inertia like there's just yeah. you know the there's like there, like we've always done things a certain way you know like uh, uh there's procedure right mm -hmm. you do it like and procedure gets like you know it becomes just this sort of like this sort of real like thing that's really hard to break down right sometimes it's good sometimes it's really bad Right, right, right. Uh, you know, when you when like when it's obvious, like things need to change, uh, um, and, and I think that's one of those things, right? Um, and and obviously, like when something like COVID happens, yes, that's like you know that just smashes that like 
you know, that mass. Like, you're just, like, no, those arguments don't apply anymore. Like, that's, exactly. you have to do better. Like, that, no, no, no. <laughs> like, we can do that job. We can, we can do that project. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it's very, yeah. I mean, there's, I don't exactly know how the post-2020 world is going to look like you know, uh, on the entertainment side of things yeah. or on the, on the creative side of things. But I do know that there's right now a lot of people sitting at home coming up with some amazing ideas. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so there's going to be a, a, a boom, I really think of really amazing, uh, stuff that's going to come out, which, um, I think is going to be extremely refreshing for people. Yeah, for sure. You can see, I mean, there's, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of conversations happening right now. Um, that, I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of smart people in the industry, uh, and there's there are interesting pressures being put upon them right now, and it's just inevitable that a lot of clever solutions are going to pop up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that like I look forward to seeing that. Yeah. What, what's going to happen? Well, what what are you guys exploring at this at this point? Any kind of cool things you guys are looking at? Um. I think, you know, there's a lot of things. Um, there are a lot of things going on. Um, I don't think I can like really <laughs> talk about. I'm sure there's stuff you can't talk about, of course. <laughs> and, um, but you know, like just just from the point of view of just working from home, um, right. I, I think that was a big one, and like it was amazing to see how fast uh, our uh, like, um, our engineers actually managed to get everyone up and running Terra teacher from home, you know, right. that it was like, whoa, uh, that was just an over weekend, like, boom. Uh, uh, and uh, like every artist that needed a box was up and running. I honestly think that, that the, considering the fact that the, you know, a big part of this planet had to work from home, the, there's a lot of, you know, we talk about the unsung heroes and the first responders and the people working in the hospitals, et cetera. And I think that's absolutely true. And those are the 100% of the people we should be celebrating. But we really need to talk about the IT staff. Oh, yeah. In the like world. the unsung heroes. That, because I think that the IT staff in the world had to figure out, like, how am I going to get, you know, 300 people or 1,000 people or 6,000, whatever the number is in their company, right? Yeah. And they all of a sudden, I had to go from, they're all at work to they're all working from home have to figure out how they log in from like everything yeah. and a lot of people uh out there made that happen and like you said in a weekend and that's astonishing so people yeah. like that are always like i'm very very impressed with those guys i think that yeah. those guys really need to be celebrated because you know what this this is, is they basically allowed everyone to keep working and and to keep their jobs and keep their sanity and, and make exactly. them feel uh, and so that is a big part of it, and I think those people there's, there's deserve a, some praise. <laughs> there, there's the uh, um, you know, like on on Friday, it's it's not possible, and then on Monday, it's actually working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know uh, those guys are are pretty amazing how they they yeah. get that figured out for sure. Uh, well, that's good. You guys have got your Teradici going on and all that. And that seems to be like the solution that a lot of people seem to be thinking about just being able to remote into work through Teradici of some kind, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I think that's, you know, that's one way to do it. I think there are other options coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like some, it's not ideal for everything, um, but definitely useful for like, you know, the, the majority of the stuff is, you know, it is ac acceptable using mm -hmm. that solution. Um, but you know, I, I get like any sort of lag. I get very, very frustrated, oh, especially yeah. if you're watching animation or you know, you're gauging timing or um, yep. you know, color accuracy and stuff like that. It's like it's it's um, that's frustrating. You know, it's a tricky thing to do. Um, but you know, it's definitely um, absolutely acceptable and and beyond. But um, you know, there are there are. Um, you know, there are times when you just like you need, you know, you need that sort of immediate feedback, and then it's good to have, you know, it's good to have a, a beefy machine at home that that just um, yeah, everything happens in real time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, what is your hope? I mean, let's say like you know, we we start to come out of this. Is your hope that we go back to the way things were, or do you think there's a new place that we can find in terms of how we work and the kind of things that we do that happens beyond this? Um, I think, 
um, I think things can always get better. Mm. And, um, you know, there was certainly, you know, before this thing happened, uh, certainly things that could have been better, like so many of them. And so like my, my hope is like, uh, that, you know, um, like from an industry point of view, hopefully there will be, uh, some positive aspects of, um, you know, things that we used to do, thing, uh, things that we, like we used to do a certain way, we understand that that doesn't really apply anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, I, I, like, in the, best, in the best scenario, that would lead, lead to, like, improved lifestyle for artists, um, you know, better way of life, um, you, you know, possibly, like, so many international artists that, like, you know, live here, live, like where, um, you know, where the server is, mm-hmm. um, that would be, you know, like better for them to live like where their family is. Right. Um, so, you know, let's hope, let's hope um, some good will come of it. Mm. Obviously a lot of, you know, there's so many challenges right now uh, and, and like, you know, we don't really see through to the end um, quite yet, you know, from like, uh, at least within here, like within within the states, I mm-hmm. think there's uh, there's a ways to go still, right? Until this is is under control. So um, you know, I guess, uh, but but hopefully, yeah. Like I, I'm I'm optimistic that it it will it will um, you know once we get through through to the other side, that um, a lot of a lot of things are going to improve. Yeah, I'm 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 hoping too. I'm hoping that you're said like you said, you know, we don't you either have to live where the servers are or where the tax credits are, you know? Yes, and, exactly. And, and 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 I hope that both of those things become obvious that that's not the case. You can live yeah. where you want to live uh and you can work where you want to work. Um and it's not, you know, be nice living in Iceland. <laughs> yeah. you know or maybe maybe just the summers in iceland you know oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the summers are great the summers are great I got, yeah, um, yeah. It, so you it, know the, the days are a little short in the winter for my liking but, yeah uh, yeah and the days are a little long in a summer oh, so. man, endless days and endless nights man it's like, crazy uh, i was I, we were there in or uh, i guess it was early june or and it was like my God, the sun never sets. <laughs> it yeah. Just it keeps going. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's kind of like this. It dips. dips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what's really cool about it? I remember uh, uh, Eric Barba. They were shooting uh, uh, Oblivion. Oblivion up there, right? Yeah. And he was like, he's like, oh my God, this is HDR heaven. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like magic hours, like seven hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like uh, high, like high res high res uh, spherical images. Oh like yeah, just constantly, <laughs> just every yeah. yeah just, <laughs> they're amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, no, I I think it's I think it's really great. And you know, if you think about it, what's what's going to become more interesting is the internet connection. That's another thing that I thought was surprising about uh, COVID is that you know when people working from home, yes, people had some inter- some internet problems, but we could have easily just broken the internet in the world, you know, because oh, yeah. of this. And it didn't. So we survived. We managed to do it. So I think that that's also an interesting thing is that... Was it like, you know, the, the original design spec was like, you know, yeah, it needs to actually survive, a, uh, you know, a, a massive uh, attack right. or something like that. You know, yeah, like yeah, cellular, yeah. Cellular stuff. Yeah, and I think this is going to be a thing where now people are going to realize, for example, in the United States, that... Uh, and uh, a, a good, solid, fast internet connection is no longer a luxury. It is a necessity. Yeah. It's a utility <laughs> that totally. you need to survive as a person. And yeah. that's going to be uh, changing some of the ways that we think about uh, data transfer as well. Because I think, I don't. There's a lot of things. I mean, I, I I think that you know you've you've outlined a lot of them as like how we can be healthier and how we can have a better life, um, and uh, that can go beyond this. Uh, and yeah, it's a little crappy to be isolated in your house but at the same time i had two and a half hours and i'm not in traffic every day you know so oh man like that uh, <laughs> like just just that like just the, 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 the just the sort of the impact of like not burning fuel for yeah. two hours a day for you know the, the how many eight million people that live in la can yeah. you imagine that like that's a huge difference yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah for sure uh yeah 
and and just like you know not having to not to having to sit in traffic not that i do like when i moved from new york like um uh, so like i moved to la mm -hmm. i was like no i'm not going to sit in traffic for hours right i'm just like i'm gonna live pretty close to the office where i can just like bike to work right so it like it literally takes me like seven minutes on the bike to get there well that's good that's which good. is great um unfortunately my wife works at a different place than i work so it's like oh yeah so you have to find she, like, she's close to here but you know to her job but i'm not unfortunately but i'm not it doesn't matter now i'm, I'm where i am so but it's it's kind of um yeah i think it's going to be good i think there's something i always i always try to find a silver lining though that's just my, <laughs> my yeah my no i think that's good yeah like uh, um you know like there's going to be a day after this day um you know like, like pessimism serves no purpose right right you have to like okay well, like what's coming my way okay let's evaluate this how can i find the optimal outcome right right um and so, yeah, I think find like silver linings. Yeah, that's, like that's 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 one way to actually keep uh, a positive outlook, right? Right, or keep you motivated at least. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like things, I, I mean, that that to me seems obvious. Like if, if you just like plot, like where did I start? Like where, like you know, and where am I now? Mm -hmm. And like you know, you you like do a few sort of uh, plots along the way, and it's like it's obvious things are always getting better. Yeah, um, you know, at least from like you know this this POV, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I think, you know, things will get better. Like, uh, um, we will get through this and on the, like, you know, on the other side, um, I think, yeah, like life is good in the States. Life has been, has been pretty good. At, like, at least from my perspective, which is like obviously a very narrow perspective and mm -hmm. super privileged, but, um, it is good now, and there are so many things that are almost easy to make better, right? There are so many problems around us that was like, you know, like don't require a massive adjustment, mm -hmm. um, which almost like that makes me optimistic in, in that like if we just did these few things and yep. we're just going to, you know, like tweak these variables, like life is going to get better. Yep. I, I just, and, and I think like, uh, you know, like through history, it seems to me life has, you know, life continuously gets better, application of science and, and you know, like the scientific method. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are blips, like there are deep and like really terrible blips, but but generally speaking, you know, we're improving things and I think that will continue. I think yeah. that's, I, to me, that's obvious. I agree, completely agree. I think that that's, that's the way uh, we, will, we will have to do it. So, if you constantly look to the past and say, well, we're just going to do what we did in the past because we liked it better back then, then I don't know. I'm That's a very anti- No, no. I am, a, I am an anti-nostalgic person. So, uh, yes. so I'm a, I, I kind of like to think about the future. Yes. The past. I mean, there's, there's things to be done. There's things yeah. to be done. Like, uh, uh, you know, we can make things better. We can make life, yeah. you know, make life, uh, uh, like make life a happier place. Like, uh, Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Well, Aaron, this has been an amazing conversation. It's always good, uh, you know, like I said, we've chatted with each other for since 2008, so god, it's been 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> 12 years we've been chatting with each other and never actually <laughs> I don't think we've actually shook hands before, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> the elbows now. But, but we, got, I always see you online. You're like, you know, doing this and that. And so it's just really funny that we have it now. It's like, I should just do a podcast with Aaron. And I think we even tried. It's like, oh, you should come over, check out our office. We always said we would, and we never actually did. And we've been there for That's just like, that's just, you know, daily life. Like the grind of it. Get to the office is just like the amount of things that are like you have to deal with. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So is it, by. yeah. Is there anything else you want to share with us before we uh, sign off? Any cool, um, other cool ideas or things you're going on? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, um, uh, no, I think it's just like, you know, it, like it, it's important. Like, I think it's important to stay optimistic, like, um, yeah. you know, find the silver lining it, yeah. and we'll get through this. Uh, and, you know, um, as, you know, as frustrating as it is to watch the situation right now, I yep. think, um, um, you know, a few months down the line. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> we'll I said place. that a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but uh, but yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. We'll get there eventually. Eventually, something will happen. But it's it's true. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's good. I'm glad you're able to, to to share those thoughts. And it's so so cool to hear about you know Iceland and Janelle and all those guys. So it was really cool. I, I was just act, I was just emailing Janelle yesterday. So it's really funny. It's, it's good. Cool. Yeah. It's cool. Good people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Such a thank pleasure. Bye bye.